Okay, hello everybody, and welcome to a very special fuck you episode of the Jim Fear 138 podcast show thing, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Um, I, I, ugh, this podcast is probably going to be devoted to one thing and is probably going to involve a lot of screaming. So if you don't care about this topic, I perfectly understand. You can move on. You cannot listen to this one. I'm going to be tying on a mean fucking drunk. And I'm going to be absolutely reading the fucking riot act to somebody who deserves it. There's probably going to be a live response to something that I find completely horrific and fucking evil. Uh, and if we get phone interference, because I'm going to be using my phone to play the audio that I'm going to be responding to so we can just do this just a car style, then we're just going to have to deal with the phone interference. So that's going to that's gonna happen here in a minute. But if you've been following me on Twitter, specifically uh, today, which is the 20th, Thursday, um, you may have noticed that I had a... F- bit of a fucking meltdown. Yeah. So, for those of you who aren't playing along at home, let me just get to... Okay, thank you, thank you to, uh, Kirsova for, uh, putting that back in my notification so I can find this without having to scroll through my timeline. So, here's, here's what I said about, uh, and I wasn't able to name names at the time. I was just so angry. I had to get this off my fucking chest. And when I mean, when I say angry, I mean, I have not been this angry in fucking years. Like I'm so fucking mad right now that people would do this to children. And that's what this is about. Okay, that's the fucking problem that I have with it. And this is about to be the MRA podcast right here. I'm about to absolutely fucking ream someone for demonizing boys on a show that has a reach I can only dream of at the moment. But these people deserve to be called out for their shitty fucking behavior, especially, especially in lieu of something that I'm going to be getting to a little bit later. So get yourself a drink, get yourself a smoke, strap in because I'm going full fucking bore on these assholes. So here's what I said on Twitter earlier today to give context to those who might be wondering where the fuck this all came from. I was listening to a pseudopod episode, and now I I got permission from my boy Dimension Bucket. (coughs) I can name names, so I'm naming names. This was Escape Artists, this was a pseudopod episode, and fuck you people! Fuck you people for pulling this shit! How fucking dare you do this! I don't know what the fuck crawled up your ass. I don't know what the fuck is wrong with your brains that you can sit there and think that you're doing a good thing by demonizing children like this. But anyway, so after listening to this episode of Pseudopod that really felt like the story was okay. The story wasn't anything special. It was the episode Boys. So if you want to go listen to the story, it's not it's not a horror story. I mean, it's kind of a horror story in that you know, the actions of these boys. I'll just, I'll just go ahead and break it down full spoilers. Cause I'm, I'm too pissed off for this right now. Basically it's this group of, it's this group of boy children. They're like 12 to 14. And some of the boys are interested in very sickening things. Like I, I think the big thing in the story was throwing rocks at this decapitated cow carcass. And they were like all fascinated with the putrefaction of the cow And this one kid, the main character of the story, really found this whole fucking thing disgusting. And then there was a scene with a torture video on the internet and a couple of a couple of other things um, where these boys are just fucked in the head. And this is this this one boy is treated as there's something wrong with him uh, because he's squeamish, because he throws up when he when he comes into contact with this stuff. He doesn't want to throw rocks at the cow uh, the cow corpse because it, it sickens him. And he's treated as wrong, and this is seen by him and the other boys as something that they have to fix. 
So eventually they ho- he tells them to hoist him up and shove him face first into the dead cow body to finally fix this shit that's wrong with him. And I haven't had a fucking shot of liquor yet, and we're five minutes into this. So I'm going to get a shot, and then I'm going to go... So that's that's basically the story. And I knew where it was going. I knew what was fucking coming. But I could not fucking imagine how bad it got. Like, obviously, the point of this story is to demonize boys and demonize how boys interact with one another. Now, I've said plenty of times in the past that I am perfectly fine if you want to put a political message or, or write from a certain perspective, that's fine. You know, there's plenty of scenes in Stephen King novels, it leaps directly to mind, where there are groups of boys doing fucked up things, but they're not held up as the norm in those Stephen King novels. You know, when the group of bullies in it are thinking about raping the female character, the little girl character, that scene is a bad thing. Escape artists, Alistair. Your fucking nar- or your fucking host for this episode, who shall heretofore be referred to as cunt? It's seen as a bad thing. And of course, it's portrayed as a bad thing in the story that you're putting forward today, but it's also portrayed as the norm. As in, this is normal for little boys to do this kind of shit. This is what is expected of them, and it's fucking not. And how fucking dare you? demonize children like this and the thing that really upset me was not the story the story was passing mediocre it was just barely a mediocre story but after hearing the story and hearing the little the little blurb at the end wherein this woman goes on about uh, uh, cunt cunt goes on for about i don't know five or six minutes um and I'm assuming some of that is feedback uh, for for one of the stories because they do this thing where they read forum posts about the stories that they that they have put on in the past in past episodes. But what this woman fucking said was so egregious that I just I had to have like a little bit of an outlet because I'm at work. I can't scream i can't do what i'm doing right now i can't express this fucking anger and i'm fe- that i'm feeling at a grown fucking adult demonizing children like this and, and just portraying boys as the worst fucking thing ever and it's not even the story like i said it's the it's the shit that comes after the story so what i said on twitter for those of you who aren't playing along at home was, yeah, I think I'm just about fucking done with some of these podcasts. Publish whatever story you want, but don't expect me to sit there and be moralized to and just fucking take it. Your story sucks, it wasn't scary, and that cunt of a host demonizing entire demographic at the end of your podcast is fucking disgusting. I was entertaining the idea of subbing, actually giving you people my hard-earned money. But that's out the fucking window now. Fuck you, I'll go get an Appendix N audiobook and actually be entertained rather than that shit. Don't expect me to just put up with you pushing a fucking supremacist ideology like that. It's evil and it's irresponsible. But the worst part is that you're so high off the smell of your own farts, you can't smell the gas chambers being revved up. So fucking righteous. So much better than others. Especially those filthy men. (laughs) Fuck these people. I'm here for the SFFH science fiction, fantasy, and horror revolution now. This fucking moral posturing and preaching has got to go. I'm done putting up with this, and you fucking well should be too. I'm unsubbing from these sick fucks. All of them. And then it gets into a conversation with the uh, the guy who runs Kirsova. So yeah, I, I explained the story. That's That's where we're at. And I had a bunch of other shit that I wanted to talk about this episode. But this has just made me so fucking angry. And I don't have time to do regular YouTube videos anymore you know, response videos or, or actually put together a well thought out reasoned response to this. And the podcast is supposed to be my place to vent. So I'm going to fucking vent. And if you don't want to listen to me venting, then peace, have fun. I hope you have a good weekend. So like I said, it's obvious that the point of this story is to demonize boys. That's, that's what it is. It's treating this this callous and 
psychopathic and mentally ill, mentally fucking ill behavior as the norm for boys. Like, this is just how boys are raised. This is obviously the author's conception of how boys are raised and how boys become the evil fucking monsters that men turn into. Because this this author can't possibly conceive that boys, in general, are actually good, are actually generally good people, or at the very least, neutral. That just, that thought never fucking entered their head. And I don't know if this is a guy or a girl. If this is a guy, he's got some serious internalized misandry going on. And yes, that is a fucking thing. I make the case that internalized misogyny and internalized misandry are fucking things. If you get told something every day, every day, it doesn't matter how not true it is. If you're told you're dumb, you're stupid, you're a bad person, you're worthless, nobody will ever love you, over and over and over and over again, it does not matter how true it is, you will eventually start to believe it if you are unable to escape from that situation. So a child raised in a situation where their parents or guardian just hates women or hates men and beats them or constantly belittles them because of the sex that they were born as will grow to think that there is something wrong with them because of the way they are born. And it is one of the most monstrous and evil things that you can do to a child. And to see escape artists pimping this horse shit boldly, they're not even fucking sorry. Just, it blew my fucking mind. I thought you people were at least halfway kind of decent. Like, I'd been listening to you guys for months now, and every once in a while, yeah, you would have a shit story that was just some some social justice feminist bullshit. But the vast majority of your shit is good. But all of this shit where you're just, like, demonizing men, like that story about the chick who stole the uh, the only ending we have. The only ending we have. About the chick who, uh, who hated um, Hitchcock about the chick who hated Hitchcock so much that she saw literally she hated all men because Hitchcock was a douchebag to her. That was stupid. That was a bad story. It was fucking horrible. And I don't know where you guys pick up this shit, but you need to stop going to these places. But it doesn't matter to me anymore because I'm fucking done with you assholes. Like, I can put up with, okay, they picked a story from an author that just doesn't like men. Fine. You know? Or maybe that's just a commentary, like I remember I said in the podcast when I talked about that uh, that episode of Pseudopod, that it's possible that that story is a commentary on how toxic that mindset is. Very clearly, given the evidence at hand from the episode of Boys, that is a, a point of view that men suck that men are evil, that men are demons, that men are devils, that men are sexual abusers, that men are rapists, all men are predators, is fully fucking endorsed by escape artists. And you need look no further than what that fucking cunt said at the end of Boys. So, I have it queued up here on my phone. I'm just going to make sure that it will uh, pick up on the microphone. The second theme of this story is that golden oldie, boys will be boys. And see, right there, right there, that's when I knew some bullshit was fucking coming. I could tell it. I could tell, leading up all through this fucking story, where they're making this group of boys out to be some some fucking sick sociopaths who just who just want to hurt people and and you know play with dead things and belittle children who aren't like them. And at the end, she relates this story about these kids trying to get something out of uh, the cunt. The cunt relates a story about these kids trying to get something out of a tree. And she went over to see what it was, and it was a bird's nest. And she got the bird's nest out of the tree and showed it to them, and they were all marveling at it, new and on and shit. And then one little girl wanted to take it to school. And the rest of the children, for whatever reason, and I'm putting this in the, yeah, that totally fucking happened, uh, like like, are that happened section of storytelling. You know, it's meant to be realistic. You could picture this happening, but I don't believe for a fucking second it did. All of the rest of the children just turned on her and told her she was stupid for wanting to bring it to school and just started, like, mercilessly teasing this little girl. And apparently, most of these other children were, surprise, surprise, boys. 
And then I heard that fucking line. The second theme of this story is that old chestnut or whatever fucking phrase she used, boys will be boys. And I was like, all right, here comes this fucking disgusting feminist screed that is just going to be demonizing men and and putting ideas in people's heads about young children that are not healthy, that lead to this thing that I'm going to get into later. So here we go. Let's get on with it. Boys. I'm not going to get started on rape culture. See, this is, a, this is a rhetorical device where you bring something up while acting like you're not going to bring it up. I think uh, Justicar characterized it as, you know, well, my, you know, I would never bring up the fact that my interlocutor here is accused of raping children. And we're just going to get on with this with this debate. You're poisoning the well. You're bringing it up anyway. You're not not getting into it. You're planting seeds in people's minds so that they immediately make all of these fucking connections and come to the conclusion that you want them to come to, which is that boys are the fucking problem here. And it is one of the most disgusting things that feminism has ever fucking done. And I hate seeing this in fiction. I really hate seeing this in fiction, especially when fiction stories like this podcasts like Pseudopod and, and Podcastle, and even to an extent like Nightmare and Lightspeed are places that I go to to escape from all of that bullshit. Some day, I, some days I don't feel like dealing with the fucking politics. So I'll go listen to a nice story and just get distracted for a half hour or an hour and a half or however the fuck long the story is. But then you bring this shit into my fucking house. You bring this shit into my hobby, my genre. I, I write this shit. I'm, I'm trying to put out a fucking magazine and a podcast about this shit and try to take people away from their shitty lives. And then here you come with the fucking boy demonization. It's horse shit and you fucking know it. And how dare you portray children in this fucking light. But let's get on with this. Culture, Steubenville and Brock Turner. See? There you go. Steubenville and Brock Turner. Let's bring up these these cases where it's undeniable that these boys got fucking caught doing shit they absolutely should not have been doing and absolutely should have been fucking punished for. And the outrage over those incidents proves beyond a shadow of a fucking doubt that we do not live in a rape culture, that there is no fucking rape culture, that rape culture is a delusion created by feminists so that they are able to push their agenda because everybody cares about women more than they care about men. And if you make women out to look like the victim, you can get away with fucking murder. Or at least, at the very least, get away with not caring about murder. Like, you guys remember the whole Boko Haram thing with uh, Michelle fucking Obama, uh, the whole bring back our girls thing where Boko Haram kidnapped this obscenely huge number of girls from a school in, I want to say it was Morocco. It was somewhere in Northern Africa. And there was this whole social media outrage about bring back our girls. You don't have the right to kidnap women like this. Women aren't property. You know what happened to the boys? Does anybody out there know what happened to the boys? I'll give you some silence so you can fucking guess. Do you have a guess? Do you have a guess yet? Because I know what fucking happened. The boys were burned alive in their beds. Now, where's the fucking outcry about that? Where's the fucking rage about that? Where's the social media hashtags about that? Supported by millions of people all over the fucking world with, with one of the highest offices in the land's blessing. Where You people don't fucking care because they're not girls. It doesn't fucking matter to you. They're boys. They're fucking expendable, right? So the outcry over shit like Steubenville and the, uh, the other incident she mentioned that was the recent case, I can't remember the guy's name off the top of my head, but I know what case she's talking about, is the case where the guy uh, was put under like house arrest or something like that. Very recent. It happened very recently. He was released like on bail or something. And the outcry. There are people outside of that dude's house with guns threatening his life. And you know what's fucking done about those people? Nothing. Nothing. And the dude's a rapist. I don't fucking care what happens to him. Rape is an absolutely abhorrent thing to do to anybody. Anybody. Man or woman. But especially children. But the outcry about these incidents proves 
that we do not live in a rape culture. He just got a shitty judge or a really, really fucking good lawyer. Did you see what happened after Steubenville? Were you on social media? Because I was. People wouldn't shut up about how fucking horrible it was. Like, they cracked that fucking case open. And they exposed that corruption, and they got those boys punished, as they should have been. But once again, but once again, she's still in this rhetorical trick. I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually have to look it up, so hang on a sec. Yeah, here we go. Uh, from, from Wikipedia. It's called Apophysis. Uh, it, it's from, I don't, apophemy, which means to say no. The Greek word apophemy. So apophysis is a rhetorical device wherein the speaker or writer brings up a subject by either denying it or denying that it should be brought up. Accordingly, it can be seen as a rhetorical relative of irony. And then there's there's some some other names for it. But uh, that's that's what she's doing with all of this shit. I'm not going to bring up rape culture. I'm not going to bring up, you know, Steubenville. I'm not going to bring up this one guy. You know, I, I wish I could remember the dude's fucking name because God forbid that ever be forgotten. But she's still bringing it up. She's still planting these ideas in people's heads, especially with the context of the story that we just got narrated. It, it's fucking disgusting to put these ideas in people's heads about boys. This is not fiction. This is not horror. This is not speculative fiction. This isn't this isn't fun stories told for the good of telling stories or just or just to tell a fucking story. It's politically motivated propaganda designed to demonize boys. I don't know how it, it, there's any mud in the water here. This is an evil thing to fucking do. So let's continue. Turner though these are all good examples. The thing is that this idea is implanted in boys, particularly here in America, much earlier. It so this idea is implanted in boys. You know what boys will be boys actually fucking means, cunt? Do you know what it actually means? It means boys are going to run around and get in trouble and get scraped up and probably hurt themselves because boys are rambunctious and they like playing rough. That's what it fucking means. That's what boys will be boys means. You know, nobody uses the phrase boys will be boys to excuse cutting up your neighbor's cat in the woodshed. Nobody uses boys will be boys to excuse fucking rape. You psychopath. You should be locked up in a mental institution for this. How fucking dare you? You need to be committed. What the fuck is wrong with you? talking about children this way. This is normalized? Rape is normalized in boys? Are you fucking mental? Do you know how many of my friends think rape is a good thing? All of them male, by the way. All of my male friends. Do you know how many of them think that rape is a good thing? None of them! None of them. You stupid cunt. Not a single fucking one. I remember in college classes where it wasn't even really related to the subject. It just kind of came up because conversations tend to fucking wander. But I was sitting in a college class of about 30 to 40 students. And we were working in groups. And there was about 10 of us in this group, probably about, I don't know, eight guys, two girls, something like that. And the subject of rape and rapists came up. And one of the guys said, well, I don't know about the rest of you, but I'd sure like to beat a rapist to death. And everybody, including me, agreed with him. Rape is not this normalized thing that men just fucking do, okay? Rape is sexually forcing yourself on another human being. That's not something boys are taught, and it's not justified by pithy phrases about male behavior in adolescence. Like, when I was a kid, when I was a kid, I would go out to my cousin's house, right? And my cousin's family had this huge, huge patch of land. They, were, they lived out in the fucking boonies. And we would take our BB guns out there and we would set up a stump with some action figures and shit, like little Burger King meal shit. And we would shoot them with our BB guns. And we set up on two, inter so it was like a triangle. 
So me and him were at the bottom of the triangle, and the stump with the action figures was on the other one. Now my cousin shot one, and the BB rebounded off of the action figure. It was a good shot. It rebounded off of the action figure, and it hit me right in the forehead. Right in between the eyes. Just like an inch or two up. Right in the forehead. That's the kind of shit that you justify with boys will be boys. We're out there playing with, with guns because boys tend to like that kind of shit. We're, we're, and it wasn't even real guns. It was just BB guns. But thank God nobody was hurt and boys will be boys, so they're going to get scuffed up a little bit. That's what boys will be boys is meant to justify. You psychotic bitch. You utter and complete fucking lowlife. But like I said, y'all may not understand why I'm so fucking upset about this. And I'm going to get to that later. Because there was a news article that came out. I want to say it was on Twitter. So let me just get back, go to my tweets, and just get this queued up. Because I want to finish with this right now. And this came, this came right on the, the feet of one another. Like, I saw this, I think, last night. And it, it just upset me so fucking badly. And then this happens today. And it's, it just fucking set me off, man. And this is what, yeah, this is what the fucking podcast is going to be about today. So, I'm sorry for all of you people who wanted me to talk about the goddamn, uh, the goddamn presidential shit. Okay, I managed to find it. Thank you to Ruji, uh, for, for liking that, uh, that tweet so that I could find it again without scrolling God only knows how fucking long. <clears throat> so let me get another shot and we're going to get on with this response to this lady. I'm sorry, this cunt. She doesn't deserve to be called a lady because ladies don't treat boys that way. And this is about as far as in as I got. So from here on out, it's going to be me and you discovering this together. <laughs> It goes deeper than just misogyny. Do I even need to say anything? Do I, do I even? Boys play with guns. Boys. Yes. Boys tend to prefer more masculine toys. There have been studies done on infants, wherein infants will gravitate towards gendered toys. Girls prefer to play with dolls. Boys prefer to play with construction equipment and guns. That's not culturally ingrained bias, that's the way people are. And there's nothing wrong with it. Boys play with roadkill. Yeah, that happens sometimes. Actually, as a matter of fact, I have a story about playing with roadkill. We found a dead squirrel uh, on the road in our neighborhood one day. And... It, it was absolutely dead, but, you know, we sat there, we were young, we were like, I don't know, eight or nine, something like that, and we were just like poking it with a stick, because it's the first time you actually seen a dead animal just lying in the middle of the street. You know, you're curious about that kind of shit. It's not like we were we were sitting there fucking dissecting it, or something like that. You know, we didn't shove each other's faces into it. And the friend that I was sitting there investigating the roadkill with uh, was just as uncomfortable around it as I was. He was like, this is nasty, let's go before, you know, something happens or whatever, or, you know, we catch some disease or some shit. And that friend had another friend that had a similar incident happen to him. But that other friend, that friend of my friend, got a couple of sticks out of the woods or off the side of the road and picked up the dead animal with sticks and chased my friend around with it. We never hung out with that guy again after that because that behavior is not countenanced. It's not normalized. It's not something boys just do. The boys that do that and the girls that do that for that matter because don't pretend that girls don't do this shit to each other too. There's something wrong with them. Mentally. And kids can tell when there's something off. They might not know what to do about it, but eventually they get the idea that that guy might not be the best person to hang around. He's a little bit wrong. There's something ain't right with him. 
This is not normalized behavior in boys. The type of behavior described in this story and that the cunt is describing here is not normal boy behavior. It is psychopath behavior. And they're trying to make boys to look like psychopaths. How do you, how does this enter your head as okay? What kind of fucked up fucking worldview do you have to have to look at children and go, yep, that's the way they operate. They're all psychopaths. No, I'm not a fan of kids. I don't want any kids. But at the same time, I know that every little kid is not some fucking psychotic killer rapist in waiting. Very bad shit has to happen, and usually it's a cycle of abuse. They were Rapists were usually raped as children, and they continue the cycle. That's how this shit works. It's not, it's not something that just boys are raised to do, because, oh, boys will be boys, and, oh, look at them, they're sticking that boy's face into a dead animal. That's just, that's just boys. That's just how boys are. Oh, look at them. They're raping that little girl. <laughs> boys will be boys. What fucking planet do you live on? You need to bring your feet back down to Earth. Because right now you're living on planet fucking crazy town. Boys are expected to find joy and fulfillment in violence. You don't think that evolution has something to do with that? You don't think that might be women's fault just a little bit? Sexual selection and all that? No, that doesn't happen to humans. Evol evolution with humans stops at the neck, don't you know? You know, there's no, there's no history of men literally being bred for war and sent off to war and women staying home because they're more valuable, they're not expendable. That never fucking happens. Men never take up arms to defend their women. And women certainly aren't attracted to those type of men. God, no. Heaven forfend. Perish the thought. Fucking moralizing cunt. Boys are not expected to love words. To... But they do. But they do. It's very simple. Go into any library and you'll find hundreds of thousands of boys who loved words and made a bigger impact on our society than you ever fucking will. You know what's another thing that boys are conditioned to love? Women. Lay down our lives for women. I get people who get mad at me. Like, to the point of wanting to physically beat my ass when I tell them that I wouldn't physically intervene with a rape because I value my life too much. Unless it was one of my friends or family. No. It's not my responsibility to go in there and stop that. And that is such an anathema to most men that they get violently angry about the fact that I won't risk my life to defend a woman I don't know. I'll call the cops. But I'm not walking over there. And there's a very fucking good reason. And if you're, if you're looking for the reason, go look up a video, and I'll put this in the description, by a guy named Spetsnaz. That's his handle on YouTube, called The Disposable Male. And every man who's listening to this, and every woman who's listening to this, everybody should go and watch that video. Pause the fucking podcast and go watch that video. Did you watch it? That's why I won't do that shit. Because I value my own life too much. Because I don't want to become some fucking historical footnote where my family is given, like, the key to the city or some shit because I laid down my life in defense of a woman. And my life is just fucking over. But the point here is... Men. Grown-ass men. Get mad. When I inform them that I am not willing to lay down my life for a woman I don't know. They want to physically harm me. Because I won't do that shit. Men are conditioned to love a lot of things. And yes, lots of boys out there had mothers like I had that read to them every fucking day from every book they could possibly get a hold of who grew up to love stories and love words and want to tell stories to other people, whether it's their own stories or other people's. That's part of the reason I'm a fucking voice actor and an audiobook narrator. I love words. I love stories. And I love telling stories to people. Does my personal experience, does my lived experience not fucking matter here? Cunt.
How fucking dare you come at me with this horse shit? Words to enjoy beauty, to care about intelligence. Yeah, that's why, that's why all of, uh, like, 99% of the great artistic shit in the world and the great intellectual movements out there were started by women. Oh, wait! I'm sorry! It was men who did that! Wasn't it? The great thinkers? Yeah, you can name off women, but there's nowhere near the amount of women that there are men. But somehow men aren't conditioned. Men aren't brought up to love this shit. Fuck you. Fuck you. Boys are not expected to be squeamish, to turn away from horror. Yeah, we're not expected to be squeamish. We're expected to not be squeamish and to not turn away from horror because when the horrific shit happens, we're expected to deal with it. That's why that exists. That's why that's an evolutionary survival mechanism in the human species. Men are bigger and stronger than women, and when some horrific shit goes down, we're expected to put aside our revulsion and put aside our own feelings and put aside our own safety and fucking deal with it. Get rid of it or get out of the area. We're the responsible ones. You fucking supremacist. You horrific monster. From horror, boys don't cry. Yeah, boys don't cry, because crying doesn't get shit done. That's why we tell boys that. Because eventually they're going to hit the spot where they have to man up and get shit done. And if you sit there and you cry about shit, it doesn't get done. There's also, you know, the little issue about men evolving to have smaller tear ducts than women to facilitate this. Crying doesn't help in a crisis. Being able to get shit done helps in a crisis. And don't you feel like a fucking idiot for not even thinking for a second that boys have been conditioned for millennia to be the person who puts their own personal feelings and safety aside to protect you and women like you. Your fucking contempt is horrifying. You never even thought to take in this side of the argument, did you? To even look at the other side for a fucking second. That never entered your mind. You self-centered, self-serving, arrogant bitch. Boys kill and maim and torture and we say, Ah, oh, yes, boys will be boys. Who the fuck says that? You fucking psychopath. Who says that? Name me one fucking example where a boy went fucking psycho on somebody and maimed and killed and tortured and was lauded for it outside of war. Outside of war. Name me one fucking time that's not like a family like the fucking Texas Chainsaw Massacre family. That's not like the family from the fucking Devil's Rejects and House of a Thousand Corpses. Name me one fucking time. You bitch! You cunt! How fucking dare you insinuate that this is how children are raised? That this is how they grow up? That this is how they act because that's just how boys are and that's how they fucking condition to be? Do you not see the monstrous fucking implications of this yet? Of dehumanizing another group of people yet? Because I've got some history books for you to fucking read. It's the show. As the parent of a boy, this terrifies me. Oh my god, you have a son. Oh my god, you have a son. I feel so bad for your child. I feel so fucking bad for your child. Oh my god, that poor kid. I can only imagine the abuse that you fucking put him through because of the way he was born. I can only fucking imagine. Hopefully, hopefully your boy grows up all right, despite what you think, obviously think, about males. Hopefully. But this is like asking a Nazi family to adopt a Jewish kid and expecting the Jewish kid to come out okay. You fucking hate men. You fucking hate boys. Oh sure, you might love your son, but he's still a male, isn't he? That poor kid. That poor fucking kid.
I don't even have... I don't even have fucking words. That poor child. That poor fucking kid. <clears throat> All right. Terrifies me. It terrifies me even more that instead of recognizing this as abnormal, as sick, Hume thinks that he's the one who needs to be fixed. And that Hume is the main character in the story. Just so you know, Hume is the main character who thinks that all of this is is kind of nasty and he really doesn't want to be a part of it but then he gets peer pressured and bullied into believing that there's something wrong with him as opposed to something wrong with the gang of psychopaths that he's somehow hooked up with fixed in this story okay <clears throat> yeah that's that's the end so yeah Fuck you, escape artist! How fucking dare you put out this narrative about boys like this? How dare you demonize children like this? This is one of the most evil and vile and disgusting things I have ever seen come out of a fucking podcast. I cannot fucking believe you. And no, fuck you. You're not getting my money ever again. I'm unsubbed from all of your shit. Fuck your podcastle. Fuck your escape pod. Fuck your pseudopod. And while I'm at it, Fuck Nightmare Magazine and Lightspeed 2. How fucking dare you people pull this shit? What the fuck is wrong with you? These are children. How fucked of a headspace do you have to have to believe that this is the way that children just act? This is what happens when the termites dine this deeply, gang. This is what happens. This is where fiction is going right now. This, these are the people who run the fucking roost. Like, I was trying to explain this to, to Connor and Chris over at, at Dimension Bucket last night, where I was explaining what happened with the Hugos in uh, 2015 and this year. And the whole thing with the rabid puppies and the sad puppies. These people, that woman you just heard, are the people who run the fucking establishment in science fiction, fantasy, and horror. That's the standard now. And it terrifies me to my fucking core that there are people out there who think that this is an acceptable attitude to have towards children. I, I just, I, I couldn't fucking believe this when I fucking heard it. Like, while I was listening to the story, I kind of knew that it was going in this direction. But I did not imagine the wealth of fucking misandry that I would find at the end of that podcast with that woman's fucking insane ramblings. How they're allowed to get away with this shit, I have no fucking idea. So, I mentioned that I was going to get to something. Right? I mentioned that there was something that puts all this into focus. That explains why I'm so fucking angry about this right now. This article will be in the description. I'm going to archive it. Actually, I'm going to do that right now. So, uh, apparently someone had already archived this, but I'm going to update it just to make sure. This is a link from the Daily Mail, so I'll be putting the archive link and the Daily Mail link in the description. You can go check this out if you think I'm funning you. The, uh, I need to get, I need to get some fucking, some fucking whiskey for this, because this, this explains exactly why I'm so fucking angry about this. This is the headline of this Daily Mail article, right? Ohio mother's confession details how she smothered her three young sons with blankets, quote, so they would never abuse women. Let that sink in. Let that fucking sink in. I'm going to say it again, just so you can fucking hear this and understand this, okay? And this is not satire. This is not a fake story. This is the daily fucking mail. Ohio mother's confession details how she smothered her three young sons with blankets, quote, so they would never abuse women. Unquote. And let's just go, let's just go down this, this article right quick. And yeah, we're going through the whole fucking thing. An Ohio mother charged with suffocating her three young sons said in a recorded police interview that she smothered each boy with a blanket because she didn't want them to suffer. Oh, how fucking nice of you. Brittany Pilkington, 24, also said in her taped confession she was depressed and worried her sons would eventually become abusive towards women. 
Pilkington can be heard in the recording made in August 2015, a day after the death of her youngest son, telling officers that she was sleeping with the infant in bed and then woke up on top of him. She was also recorded saying she held a blanket over her other son's face. The married mother of four is accused of suffocating her sons over a 13-month period out of jealousy at the attention her husband gave the boys. Authorities allege she killed her three-month-old son, Niall, in July 2014. His four-year-old brother, Gavin, in April 2015, and three-month-old Noah in August 2015. The couple's five-year-old daughter remains in the custody of relatives, and thank God that that kid's at least okay. Thank God. Pilkington has pleaded not guilty to three counts of aggravated murder. Her trial is scheduled for late February 2017, and if convicted, she could face the death penalty. Good. Kill her. Kill her. I want this cunt dead. This bitch deserves to die. You don't get to kill children and get the fuck away with it. A Logan County judge has been reviewing Pilkington's statements while considering a request to exclude her confession in the potential death penalty case. Her lawyers argued it was obtained unconstitutionally, and if she gets off because of that. Oh. Prosecutors, however, said the Bellafontaine woman knowingly agreed to be interviewed without the presence of a lawyer. These were not statements that were coerced, but were given voluntarily, Logan County Chief Assistant Prosecutor Eric Stewart said. But the defense claimed police officers pressured Pilkington into making the self-incriminating statements in violation of the Fifth and Fourteenth Amendments. Pilkington's attorney, Mark Triplett, told Judge Mark O'Connor on Tuesday that police knew his client's lack of mental acuity and that she didn't understand when she signed a form waiving her Miranda rights. So basically, the bitch is dumb, and she didn't know what she was doing when she waived her Miranda rights. So she deserves to get away with murdering her children. Stewart countered by noting that Pilkington obtained her high school diploma and that she was advised of her rights by officers at the police station and then again at the sheriff's office. As the judge watched Pilkington's hours-long police interview in court on Tuesday and Wednesday, the woman sat quietly between her two lawyers and kept her head down, reported the station WDTN. In July, Pilkington's husband, 44-year-old Joseph Pilkington, pleaded guilty to sexual imposition for having sex with his wife before they were married and getting her pregnant when she was just 17 years old. Before marrying her, the man had been in a long-term relationship with Brittany's mother and had lived with her under one roof from the time she was nine. God, this whole family is just fucked. This is what I was talking about earlier, that this shit is a cycle. That it, it's, a, it's a cycle, and usually there's abusers in the past that abused the abuser in the present. Under the plea deal, the husband was required to register as a sex offender for 15 years. Pilkington is not considered a suspect in his children's deaths. Well, at least he didn't murder the fucking kids. <clears throat> this is what I'm talking about, guys. This is the kind of dangerous shit that this absolute cunt from Escape Artists is promoting. And I, I, this woman, this woman, this Pilkington woman, is obviously mentally disturbed. She's obviously got mental issues going on. Um, <clears throat> I don't think that excuses her actions in the fucking slightest. But when you spend, what? 60 years now, almost, pimping this narrative that men are fucking evil and that they all grow up to be rapists and abusers and absolute rapacious bloodied ogres. You're going to get that message to some crazy fucking person who's going to do something about it. It's like the people that firebombed the fucking uh, GOP office in North Carolina like a week ago. You call Trump Hitler enough, you compare him to Hitler enough, and someone's eventually going to think that they're doing a good thing by firebombing a fucking GOP office, or God forbid, assassinating somebody. That fucking happened. Someone tried to assassinate Trump because of all of this fucking rhetoric. So eventually, this hyperbole, this, this supremacist message is going to get out to crazy people who aren't just going to quietly change laws and introduce things like uh, VAWA and Title IX and shit like that. It's going to get to people like this who are going to smother her children to death because they might abuse women one day. Because they might. Apparently the thought didn't enter her head that she could be a fucking good mother and raise her children to be good people. Apparently that didn't fucking come to her mind. And she decided that rather than go through all of that fucking work, it would be easier to just kill him. 
This is why I call the woman from Escape Artists a fucking monster. This is why I call her a fucking psychopath. Because she's pushing this narrative that is actively harmful to people. She is demonizing children with this original sin horse shit that all men are fucking evil and culpable. And it emboldens people like this to do what this woman did. I don't know, guys. I'm, I'm just so, I'm so fucking livid right now. <clears throat> I'm so fucking livid about this. Uh, like I, I had respect for escape artists. You know, um, when me and, and Chris were kind of constructing Dimension Bucket magazine and kind of what we wanted it to be and how we wanted to structure the podcast, we took notes, both good and bad, from escape artists because I listened to them religiously for like nine months. And every once in a while, like I say, they would have one of those shitty, okay, like, why is this feminist social justice bullshit? This isn't a good story. It's not a good horror story. It's not a good sci-fi story. It's just, it's just you shitting on men for 39 minutes. You know, why is this in here? But those were easy to overlook because of the, the glut of good content that they put out. But this right here is the straw that broke the camel's back, man. I am fucking angry. And I'm done with these fucking people. I was thinking about subscribing. Like I said earlier, I was thinking about subscribing and giving my money to these people because I thought that they were doing a good thing with their fiction. I thought that they were doing a good thing with their podcasts. But then this comes along, and this is not something that I can fucking countenance anymore. This is not something that I can put my money behind. This is not something that I can devote time to. Like I said on Twitter, fuck you people, I'll go down the appendix end list and I'll find me a fucking audiobook of one of those books and I'll actually enjoy myself instead of getting fucking preached to and listen to some delusional cunt demonize children and, after a fashion, justify the shit that this Pilkington woman did to her kids. If she didn't outright justify it, she damn sure laid the groundwork for it. And it's not like this shit is impossible to fucking see coming. All you have to do is study history for, like, the briefest of moments. Take a fucking history course. Go crack open a fucking history book and learn about how demographics have been demonized all over the world. And this demonization and dehumanization of these demographics eventually leads to shit like that. That's why I brought up the fucking gas chambers. They're so high off the smell of their own farts that they can't smell the fucking gas chambers lighting up. They're so good, they're so righteous, they're so right that they can't see beyond the bridge of their own fucking nose. They don't have the foresight to look beyond and see how this might affect people. See what the consequences of this rhetoric that they're spewing are. And it's fucking disgusting. And I'll be god damned if I'm going to support it in any way, shape, or form. So yeah, fuck you, escape artists. Fuck you. How dare you push this shit? I guess that's a podcast. I'm sorry that this one was fucking angry. I'm sorry that I spent the entire podcast talking about just this one issue. I, I Let me get out my fucking list here. Maybe I've got something that I can recommend to you guys. But right now, I'm just so fucking livid that, yeah, no, I don't have anything. I, I don't have anything that I wanted to recommend to you guys this week. I, I've... I've I'm just so fucking angry about this. That This is what I really fucking wanted to talk about. This needed to be fucking addressed. These people needed to be called out on their horse shit. So that's that's the podcast. Now, I'm sorry for this. Hopefully next week we'll be back to, to fun shit. Uh, we'll be able to... I'll, I'll recommend you guys some more podcasts or some movies or something. Or, or maybe I'll watch a good anime in the meantime. But I just... Mm, this just pissed me off so fucking badly. This, I, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll tell you what I'll do. Next week, next week, next podcast, unless something like this fucking happens again, which it shouldn't because I cleared all of these fucking monsters out of my subscription box on uh, iTunes. I'm just done. I'm not subscribed to fucking Pseudopod, Podcastle, Escape Pod, uh, Nightmare, fucking Lightspeed. None of these people. None of these people. You start doing this shit, this is where it leads. And I'm done. I'm not supporting you if I see you pulling this shit anymore. I, I'm just, I can, I can see where it's fucking headed. I've been in this game long enough to see the signs. And if you're willing to blatantly push this horse shit, then you don't get none of my nothing. You get none of my nothing except for my fucking utter contempt. 
and my willingness to go all around the internet and let people know that you are absolute demons. You are monsters. You are the most evil scum of the earth. To do this to children. To justify doing what Pilkington did to children. And of course, it's only the crazy people that are actually going to go out there and do that. But if you repeat a lie often enough, it becomes the truth, as Goebbels said, so prophetically. And even if it's not the truth, you can get enough people to believe that it is the truth that will justify something horrible. And that's where that kind of fucking rhetoric leads, and I'm not having it. So I'm not going to go on a fucking hate campaign against escape artists. I'm just going to get get my fucking ire out. I'm going to vent my spleen here like I did for the past hour and eight minutes. And just encourage everyone that I know to not listen to these fuckers anymore. They don't deserve it. They are evil people. I don't care how sm many smiles they put on. I don't care how fucking nice they appear in their little intros and their little outros and shit like that. They're evil. And there's the proof right there. I just fucking played it for you. And it's not just the woman. It's not just the author. It's the company and the people behind it. Because they're allowing this shit on their, on their platform. I guarantee goddamn T you that they wouldn't... If somebody wrote a fictionalized... Well, I mean, Turner Diaries was already fictional. But if somebody wrote like a science fiction or, or horror Turner Diaries type story from a white supremacist perspective, they wouldn't be pushing that shit. You know, they wouldn't have a fucking a fucking host on there that agreed with that and pushed it as a fucking good thing and talked about how scary it was for them that the Jews control the banks and the media. But yet, because this is demonizing boys and women are the victims and, oh, oh, these boys might go on to be rapist monsters and that's just how boys are because boys will be boys. It's the same fucking thing with a different target. And they don't deserve your money. They don't deserve your clicks. They don't deserve your subscriptions. Fuck these people. I hope you fucking go under, you monsters. If I could curse, I, if I could curse people, I would curse you to fucking financial ruin because you don't deserve to have a company like you do and a platform as big as you do to push shit like this. But yeah. Okay. So like I said, uh, next, next week I'll do a fucking, uh, uh, like a bunch of horror movies. I'll recommend you guys a whole shit ton of horror movies that I like, you know, get in the Halloween spirit. It'll be coming out on about, I don't know, the 20, 28th, 29th, something like that. So I'll, I'll go and watch some horror movies over the, over the week and, I'll do like mini reviews and recommendations and shit like that. And maybe something you've seen before, maybe something you've never seen before. But this shit just had to be addressed. But yeah, thanks for listening, everybody. I really do appreciate it. Uh, you can find us on iTunes, um, YouTube. Uh, I'm on Minds, Gab. Go to my website, jimfear138.blogspot.com. Click the social media tab. You can find all of my social media over there. You can follow me at Gab, Minds, YouTube, uh, Twitter, all of that shit. So yeah, and like I say, don't go and enact a hate campaign against escape artists because I don't want to be that guy. But these people fucking deserve to be called out for this shit. They absolutely deserve to be called out for this shit. And I was almost mad enough to just start getting into fights on Twitter. Like, I was two steps away from being banned from Twitter today. Or at the very least, blocked by everybody in, you know, the podcast community. Just how fucking dare you people. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm out. All right. Peace guys.